Good morning. My name is Gemma Scrimger and I'm a core surgical trainee in London in the UK. And this presentation is about real world outcomes of intravesical on a botulinum toxin A, Botox A, in patients with symptomatic overactive bladder. To start, I have no affiliations to disclose and am self funded for this meeting. Prospective randomised trial data shows significant benefit from intravesical Botox A in 60% of index patients with symptomatic overactive bladder. The data suggests a lasting efficacy following the first treatment that persists throughout subsequent treatment cycles. However, the data available may not reflect outcomes in all comers, so we aim to assess the outcomes of treatment with Botox A in all comers. We carried out a retrospective review of medical records of 418 consecutive patients between the 1st of January 2006 and the 21st of December 2018. And all patients included had symptomatic overactive bladder, which was refractory to both medical and behavioural therapy, and they all also had urodynamically proven detrusor activity. Data collection included patient demographics, Improvement after treatment, which was assessed using the Patient Global Impression of Improvement score. This is a validated tool for symptoms of overactive bladder in the form of a single question asking patients to rate their condition after treatment as compared to baseline, on a scale of 1 being very much better to 7 being very much worse. Data collection also included continuance of treatment, number and dosage of repeat treatments, and the need for intermittent self catheterization So a total of 413 patients, with 285 of whom were female, which was nearly 70%, fulfilled the inclusion criteria, and 200 of these 413 patients had had previous pelvic surgery. The patients were stratified into three groups according to their treatment response. Those in the good response group had PGII scores of 1 and 2, those in the partial response group had PGII scores of 3, and there were those with no response who had PGII scores of 4 or greater. A good response was seen in 235, which was 56.9% of the patients, a partial response in 48, which was 11% of the patients, and the remainder had no response. 174, which was 74% of the patients in the good response group, were female and 32, which was 66.7% of patients in the partial response group, were also female. And although the total number of patients made up 69% of the complete series, this was actually statistically significant. Meanwhile, though, there were no significant differences between age ranges or rates of previous pelvic surgery. 269, which was 65.1% of the patients, had more than one Botox A injection, and the range of this was between 1 to 19. New onset ISC occurred in 156, which was 35.4% of the patients. So, to conclude, in real-world patients, almost half of whom in our series had undergone previous pelvic surgery, Botox A improved symptoms in 68.5%, though this is at the expense of new onset ISC in 35%. And a good response is significantly more likely in women, but this does not appear to be dose dependent. Thank you very much for your attention.